Okay. I'll show you how to make a make your own dip worm for catfishing. And uh I think I got my camera set to work in this area right here, so I'm gonna try to keep everything right in here. You can see what I'm doing. Got the camera up a little higher looking over top of me. But uh basically uh got some treble hooks. I've got some uh call them ring worms because uh, it's just a plastic worm. <clears throat> this is a little curly tail plastic worm that uh, I pulled the tail off and these have uh, little ridges all up and down the sides and uh, they're pretty tough. But anyway, um, that's so your uh, your dip bait will stick good to that. Give it something to hold on to. Um, I've got a, a leather needle that I made myself. It's just a, a big heavy needle that uh, I curved the point on and it doesn't need to be curved for this, so any needle that your line will uh, go through will work for this. Longer the better, makes it easier on you. And uh, this is some Trilene big game line. I believe this is 20 pound test. The sticker came off of it, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I I remember buying it, and I, I know that's what it was. Uh, cut yourself off a nice long section. Don't be stingy with the line. You can waste a little bit for doing this. You want to leave yourself plenty. So you don't come up short at the end. We're going to have to make two knots, one on each end. Thread your line through there, your big game. And then you want to thread your, your worm on there. And just a good length uh, for the worm would be about from the middle knuckle on your middle finger to the tip of your finger and pinch off whatever's left so you end up with a worm about about that long. I'm just guessing three inches or so. And thread your worm on there trying to keep it as straight through the center of it as possible. <coughs> Apologize for that fan blowing there. It's pretty warm out here in the garage this evening. A little air moving. I think you'll be able to hear me just fine. I'll try to speak up so you can hear what I'm saying. But uh, just feed your worm on there, on your needle. Come out the other end, just thread him on down there. Pull that line right on through it. There you go, there's your worm body. Now we're going to need to tie one of these treble hooks. They don't have to be red. Uh, I do like the Eagle Claw uh, bronze, the dark brown colored hooks. Those are really good strong hooks and uh, I forget what brand these are but anyway I bought these for uh, repairing some uh, crankbaits that had rusted hooks on them and so this is what I had a box of on hand. I don't even remember what aught those are, maybe, uh, maybe a 3 aught. Anyway, snip your line right there at the needle. So you got two tag ends here. Now, this is a polymer knot we're going to tie. What you do, you're going to grab right in the middle of uh, your slack here. You're going to make a make a make a little eyelet there, and this line is doubled. It's already doubled once, and I've now I've doubled it again, so it's quadrupled. Take that, poke it right through the eye of your hook, just like so. Real easy so far, huh? Okay, got my tag ends here and my fingers. Got the loop ends right here. All you're gonna do is tie one overhand knot, just like you're gonna tie a, tie a knot. Here's your loop end, here's your tag ends over here. Now, take that loop, put your treble hook through it. And uh, 
I'll kind of pull on these tag ends a little bit to get that cinched up just a little bit more. And when you're at this stage right here, you're going to want to wet that with some saliva. Don't get all girly on me now. I use a pair of locking pliers to hold that treble hook so I don't get it in me. And you want to cinch that knot down. You have to pull on your main line and your tag ends both at the same time. Kind of work that work that knot down in there tight. You get that all cinched in real good and tight like that. It's not going to come off. And this is 20 pound big game doubled. It's not going to break. Okay, snip off those tag ends. Now, feed your worm back down, down there to your hook. Then uh, I leave my pliers attached here, to, so I know where that hook's at. I bleed easy, and I don't want to get it in me. Anyway, got your worm all nice and straight there. All right, there we go. Now, to finish this off, this end, take your main line, double it like that, just like we did for the other end. Let me take these pliers off for just a second. Just like this. I'm just going to tie one overhand knot. What we want to end up with is a loop. We end up with a loop out here. And you want this big enough that your worm body's going to, and your hook's going to be able to fit through that. So, you know, you're talking probably a loop big enough to go around your middle finger there. Just like that. Alright? Now put your pliers back on. Wet that right there a little bit. And I'll take uh, something to hold on to it with here. Put through there to hold on to it. And cinch that up real good. Nice and tight. body, arm mounted filament, and uh, I always like to snip my tag ends off just so they don't get hung up on everything. Just leave a leave a little bit sticking there off the side, maybe an eighth inch or so. And there you have it. There's your dip worm. I don't know how expensive these are. They're not terribly expensive, but why pay three or four bucks, you know, for a bag of three or you know, dollar a piece for them at a bake shop or three or four bucks a package at Walmart when you can make your own. You got some trialing big game. I know you got trouble hooks if you catfish. And uh, you can pick up a whole bag of these uh, these plastic worms with the rings on the sides of them, the ribs, so uh, that'll hold the bait good. Uh, you can get a package of El Cheapos for probably a couple bucks at Walmart and, and make yourself up a dozen or more of these worms. Anyway, while I'm at it, I'll show you what kind of rig I use. This is called a Carolina rig. We used this a lot when we were bass fishing tournaments. And uh, basically, it's a uh, this is a half ounce uh, worm weight slip sinker that I'm using. Put that on first. And uh, here's a bead, just a plastic bead. It doesn't have to be glass, doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can get a whole box of these in the craft section for little to nothing. They make, uh, kids make necklaces and stuff out of them. And uh, the purpose of that is so it doesn't, your sinker doesn't beat the crap out of your knot right here at the swivel. When you, uh, when you cast it out there and that sinker slams down onto the top of your knot, after so many times, it can actually wear a spot a bad spot on your knot and, and give your line some place to break. So this, what this bead does, it slides down on there, covers up your knot and protects it. So now that sinker won't uh, tear your knot up. And 
and then sometimes these uh, these sinkers will actually have a burr in here that can cut your your knot down there. So okay, then I got a fair size uh, barrel swivel because that worm's going to twist down there, laying in the current. It's going to be spinning around in circles till the fish eats it. Okay, and then I've got uh, probably a, a foot a liter away from my uh, my main swivel, and I've got another swivel tied. I like. I like two swivels just because if one stops spinning, that worm's still down there turning around in circles. I've got two swivels to keep my line from twisting. You get your line all twisted, you're going to have problems and you're just going to have a really bad day. So uh, two swivels is better than one. I've got plenty of swivels, so why not use them? And uh, get the good quality ones. You get the El Cheapo swivels, uh, you're just taking a chance on losing a nice fish. I have one break on you, so buy the good quality ones. Uh, Eagle Claw is a good brand of hooks, swivels, uh, everything. Anyway, now you take your worm here with the loop that we made on this end. You're going to take that and uh, thread it right through the eye of your, your swivel. This is why I wanted you to leave enough line to make a, a loop here big enough to do this. Okay. Now I've got that loop through my swivel. Now take your entire hook, your entire hook and worm body, put that through the center of that. Pull that through there. We can attach that worm to our swivel without having to tie a knot. And uh, that's not going to come off. I just kind of work my work my loop down there on the eye of that swivel so it kind of stay there. There we go. We're ready to catfish. When you get ready to dip, I'm sure most of you guys know this trick if you use dip bait. Uh, but you, you don't need to get your fingers nasty with this. No. Take your worm and, and drop it down in your jug of dip bait and then take a stick and poke him down and around in there to get all the gooey on him and then just pull it out. You don't never have to touch the worm or the bait. And another little tip for you too, when you bring that worm in uh, to rebait or after you catch a fish, get yourself a paper towel and dry that worm off. When you bring it in, <clears throat> Lay that, lay that on a paper towel and do this. Get that water off of it, dry that, dry your worm off, and that bait will stick a whole lot better to it when you go to rebait. But uh, there you go. There's a catfish rig. We're gonna go after them tomorrow morning. Hopefully get a good mess. And hope this tip helped you out a little bit. Good luck, good fishing.